Hey, welcome to a special edition of Leadership Lean In. Today, I'm excited because we have Chad Veach having an incredible conversation with Pastor Travis Green. Hey, and while you're watching this, if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe, you like this video, and share it with a friend. Okay, like we say, we can't promise perfection, but we're going to get a little bit better every single day. Let's jump in. We've had a ton of amazing guests, but I got to tell you, this guy to me is just leader of leaders. Please put your hands together. If you're on a run, just stop. Clap with me. Travis Green. Hey. In I the clap. building. Yeah, clap. We got to. Isn't it awkward gotta, when people clap for themselves? Yeah. Well, I hate I, that. I like a good self-validator. I just think it's weird. Yeah, self-validation. Aren't I awesome? <laughs> I think it's because you don't know what to do with your hands when you're getting a compliment. Yeah, uh, that's so true. Yes, thank you for uh, <laughs> acknowledging my greatness. I appreciate it. I don't know what to do. Uh, as opposed to just standing there. Yeah, that's weird too. <laughs> Man, thank you so much for being in LA. Thank you for being on the pod. Thank you for being with us. I'm you having are the time of my a life. leader. Man. My God. I'm having a great time. Yeah, um, to be acknowledged. Your new book is sitting right here, and a great photo of us is sitting right there. I'm also sponsored by this water company. <laughs> we are sponsored by Zen Water. We do. <laughs> let's shout out to actually Zen Water. This is a sponsor, and <clears throat> hope, hopefully we'll future invest in this. Anyways, um, but um, man, thank you so much for being here. I'm you do, you love LA? I really do. I was telling uh, your youth pastor yes. earlier, I for me, LA expands my thinking a bit. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I'm in South Carolina. And um, it's grassroots. It's where mm. my, my whole family's from. Uh, and so I love the South. I'm a Southern boy. Mm. Don't ever really desire to leave. Yeah, yeah. I just love the South. Yeah. Um, but, you know, because of the exposure is limited, the mm. biggest thing we got popping is our college. Yeah. The South yeah. Carolina Game Shout Talks, out. Which is a big deal. Yeah. Especially, women, especially deal. women's basketball right now. Especially women's basketball. Yeah, yeah. So it's a big deal. Number one in the country. It's a big deal. Yeah. But that's the biggest deal we got in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's Game Cogs. Yeah. Way lower forward city. Not way low. I would put it just right below. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But that's, so LA that's is from, like, but everything is like. Yeah, like I always say like. Dodgers, in, Lakers, yeah, Zoe. In LA, there is no big deal. That's a good way it, to put it, it. it. Like, you know, the Rose Bowl could be packed with Coldplay. You never feel it. Mm. Dodger Stadium could be in the playoffs or even the World Series. You would never feel it. Wow. It's so, there is no such thing as big. You could be sitting at a restaurant next to so-and-so, but it's not a big deal because that's just so-and-so. The, the next day you're going to see so-and-so. Is Nothing is big in Whoa. L.A. Whoa. And that's a that's kind an of- interesting culture. It, 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 very interesting. And I've never heard it said like because that. Because then what becomes a big deal to you? That's- I, and I always think as a faith leader, as someone that leads people to the presence of God, that's why I feel so much confidence in what we do because that is the biggest deal. Mm. So I was like, man, I went to every club and every, I've been, had dinner with so-and-so, da, 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 da. but this thing that I'm feeling here, yeah. what is this thing? Yeah. This is the biggest thing. That's great. I'll preach. I wish we could get somebody. Oh, yeah. all where's, you, the, where's the keyboard? All you, all you travel with is drummers, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> Musicians. Yeah, yeah. We got to have musicians. Yeah, yeah. Bring me a musician. Okay, so Scripture. I, I want to ask you, you you have been leading for so long. You've been uh, leading on so many different scales, so many different iterations of your leadership in life. When did you start to realize, I need to have the character to run the the race at the long haul? Because mm. yeah, you you... you Probably from a young age, realized, wow, I have some talents. These are some God given talents. Yeah. Some raw, you got to develop your gift, of course, your craft. Yeah. But when did it re you realize, like, I got to also work on my character so I can lead for a long time? Because mm. you've been doing this for a long time, which tells me you made a commitment <clears throat> to your character yeah. a very long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, honestly, my character development was a little weird and it's very specific. I didn't have like um, the typical. Oh, I got to get this perversion thing down. Mm. I got to get this drug thing down. I got to get this. Like, my stuff wasn't, like, so externally, like, seen or felt. My mm. stuff was more like, oh, we got to get this jealousy thing. Wow. We got to get this together. Mm. We got to get this uh, this, this contentment, mm. this uh, striving and ambitious nature of yours, this mm. competitive, like, I just got to win. 
And if it's not the best for everyone else, then it can't be the best for God. Wow. It was those things wow. that God had to tuck in. And can yeah. you remember a time where you felt like, ah, I've, I've, uh, I've tamed it. I've started to um, conquer that in my life. Like, so here's a, here's a very interesting story. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break from this episode to hear about some of our sponsors. That's right, okay, we've been working with uh, one of our sponsors for a while now. Shout out to Overflow. Overflow has completely innovated the way people give, fundraise, and donate to organizations. How cool is this? They've innovated in such a way that you can give crypto, stock, wow. wills, you can uh, give in all sorts of different ways. And they don't just work with churches anymore. Now they've expanded any organization that is receiving funds. You should head over to overflow.co slash LLI to book a demo. And I'm just going to say, head on over, meet the team. They're awesome. Even if you're not going to get a demo, you might as well meet them because they're the best people in True. the world. Head on over to overflow.co slash LLI. So here's a, here's a very interesting story. Yeah, I want to hear So it. I have a friend uh, who became very successful in music, but we started off together, mm. right? Uh, his name is Bruno Mars. You probably never heard of him. <laughs> um, but we started off together. Not a certain name. He has another name. But we started out together, and he took off his sword. I mean, his sword. He just... Gone. Just rocket ship. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Features everywhere with wow. everybody. Wow. I'm, I mean, big deal. Like, wow. like, like J-Lo... Put them on. Wow. Yeah, like that type of thing. Like, mm. big deal, big deal. So, like, he's th he's blowing up. He's taking off. And we started out together. I mean, we dreamed mm. together. Mm. Like, man, what would it be like to be able to walk through the airports and get mm. flights? What would it be like if you ever pull up to somebody that playing your song? Like, these are the dreams we would have. Wow. He took off. And, man, it was so tough for me. Because mm. it's like, yo, well, well, then that means there's no space for me in the sky. Wow. That means that, like, I'll never come off the ground and, like, mm. man. And then everybody think I'm a copy of him, mm. not knowing that, like, we were in the gym together. So, yeah, our jump shot looked similar. Mm. Like, we worked out together. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, for me, that was really tough. And then it took a while, but God delivered me. Mm. You know, I just kept bringing it to the altar. I kept slaying it over and over and over. Mm. Um, and so it took me a little while. Got past that. And then... um Things finally took off for me. I stopped wanting it so bad. Things took off for me musically. You know, tours, all the stuff, the awards and all the stuff. And then God told me to start a church, you know. Mm. So we started a church. I started a church. And really, as I'm starting a church, my music career is like <laughs> out, of, out of this world. Gone. Right? So it's at the same time. So I started a church, which is weird. So I'll do, you know, these big shows, you know, arenas with the elevations of the world are do, like doing their tour or doing tours with like Louis and passing all them and doing these yeah. tours. And even Louis asked me one time, like, fam, like we were just in front of like thousands. Like you're about to go back to a room of like yeah. 250, yeah. 300, Nothing. you know? Yeah. yeah, you know, so I'm I'm starting out and I'm like, yeah, man, this is my passion. This is what God called me to do. Mm. And so I'm delivered from music, from the music ambition. I'm on an island on a tour, mm. probably 20... 18, 19, 2018, mm. 2018. I'm on this island and I'm there and Mike Todd pops up on my feet. And I mean, greatest marketing genius, only out shy of, of Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, I mean, out of it's here. The greatest. Yeah. <laughs> everything. Everything yeah. he does is gold. Yeah, crazy. So I look at it and, you know, we were friends at the time. You know, I met him like right before things took off for him. So we're friends and like, um, I'm like, you know, I'm supportive. But then he's like, he's out of here. Game over. He's out of here. Yeah. What? And so here I am thinking, I'm the next John Gray. Like, it got to be me. Like, it's wide open. Like, I'm the next black relevant voice. Like, of course. It makes I mean, sense to me. And there's space. I mean, you got the Madu, You got the, you know, Tim Rosses. You got yeah. these guys. But, mm. I mean, there, there's no, like, young, like, you know, color hair, <laughs> like, music, urban wide open muscular here I come here I come and then Todd Mike Todd just like bust through the line like Barry Sanders and just like <laughs> scoring all the touchdowns and I never forgot I saw him on my feet and the Lord said there it is there's that thing in you there's that thing it's a jealousy thing mm. and I, I never forget this true story I was like whoa I was out of my clothes getting ready for a concert and I don't even Barbados or somewhere I was like yeah. whoa Wait a minute. He was like, oh, no, you weren't delivered. You just became successful in music. Wow. So let's deal with it. So that was the character for me. Whew. So I had to just kill it. 
Wow. I had to kill it. I had to kill. I had to admit it. There you go. So I admitted it to my wife. I Get admitted it, it to, my, to my to my leaders at the church. Mm. It's like, yo, I'm battling jealousy. Mm. I'm I'm trying to figure out what's my fit and all of this. Mm. Like, you know, and then getting that out and God it healed me. And then it just, you know, I could have pure like support and celebrate them, others, celebrate them. And then it wasn't until that to even like God opened up that door to even allow me to start ministering there and then be one of his close friends. But I had to get that. I had to, Get it out, and there's the first message I preached at his church at Transformation. That yeah, I was was jealous. on that. I, I talked about it. I, I closed with it that you know, you, wow. whatever you're jealous of, you'll try to mimic, and God can't trust you with that territory. You know, wow. there's envy in your heart, and so I just dealt with that. But that was my that if I had to, my biggest character thing was development. Oh man, it was it was that silent jealousy. But you know how they always say, you know, like your um. Your talent will get you at the door. Your character will keep you, yeah. so on and so forth, right? To me, I feel like in our culture, we are so enamored with talent. Yeah. The older that you get, the more you're like so enamored with character yes. and substance. And I, so I do think that you have to develop that. I love what you said. Talk to me about, um, I wanted it so bad. Yeah. What is it about a leader how do you wrestle? There's a difference between ambition and selfish ambition. Yes. So it's like, I want ambition. Yeah. Like we both love Kobe. Sure. So there's that drive. There's that discipline. Yeah. There's a there's a desire to be great. I love that. Yeah. Which had, there's, so there's vision and dream and mm -hmm. goals and all of that is very prophetic and very big. Yeah. But how do you wrestle down uh, uh, the motive of that? Mm -hmm. How did you stop reaching for it? Because you don't want to kill that part of desire to be great, desire to do something great, desire to be greatly used, yeah. desire to lead, you know, at a big level. So that has to be there always. How do you kill the other side? I think honesty, man, is mm. is half of worship. You know, wow. it's it's spirit and truth. Mm. So I think you have to present God with honesty. Mm. Um, the interesting for, verse, uh, I'm pretty sure it's in First Samuel. 17, but it's it's the story of David killing Goliath. And the Bible says something very interesting. Mm. It says, he hit him with the stone, killed him. He ran to him, cut his head off, killed him. There's something you got to kill more than once. Ooh. You know, and wow. until you cut his head off, it can get back up. Mm. And I think so many of us will slay something one time or we'll kill something one time, we'll knock it out and we're like, oh, it's over. But you have to be aware, and that's where that, that door of honesty come in. I have to remain aware and mm. open and vulnerable enough for God to keep exposing. Still there. A mm. little bit. Mm. It's, it's a little bit. It's not little, as much. A little residue. Yeah, it's a little residue. It's still, you know, still got some red in the cup. Yeah. It's still there a little bit. It's not completely <laughs> rinsed. You know, you poured it out, but it's, yeah, it's yeah. still in there. Mm. So that's, um, I think, remaining honest. Uh, with God, I think as it pertains to like ambition and selfish ambition, I was having a conversation earlier. I've been having amazing conversations all day. But uh, one of the guys uh, with me, his name is Titus, and he's uh, just a brilliant, brilliant mind, marketing, creative, worship, all the things. He's a total package. But he said something so powerful today. We're just talking about this experience, mm. right? And I mean, you're Chad Beach, right? <laughs> to you, you just you think you're just normal. You're not normal. Excuse you're, there me. You go. You're Chad Beach. <laughs> so it's like. I was just like, man, was, and I was sharing even with the, the crew that was with us, your guys, like, I think what's so cool about this opportunity for me as Zoe, you know, is like, I no longer, I'm grateful for it, but I no longer need it. Right. And not need it because I'm the stuff. Right. Need it in terms of like, I'm, I'm not here so that Chad can put me on. I'm not here right. like hoping that like, man, I hope he tells his friends that I'm actually pretty right. good. I hope I get some right. conference looks. Like yeah. I'm completely, people say that, but I know it's true for me. I'm completely content yeah. with coming here, serving you and your wife. Adding value. Adding value. Yeah. And going back home and playing Xbox with my boys tomorrow. Yeah. And I don't have to go anywhere else this year. Right. Like I'm so okay, but God did that. And God yes. gave me that contentment that healing and but Titus phrase it like this and I never heard this word mm. attached to it and it it tripped me up mm. it took me a second to kind of like even mm. like completely take it in he said you're clean wow that's that is it yes what a word mm. you're clean yes who can instill into the hand of the hill of the Lord yes only those with a pure heart mm. clean hands pure yep. heart clean yep. hands like 
your hands are clean. So like because of that, you can ascend in God's presence yes. and worship, but you can also be trusted with different mountains That's and it. different from faith to faith, glory to glory. And I know you're not going to embarrass me here. And I know mm. you don't want nothing from it. You really just, you're clean. But and, God had to do that. I didn't wake yeah, up like that. That's a big deal. You know, what, what, clean motives to me. That's yeah. like, I think all of leading starts with the motive, the intention. Why am I texting somebody? Why do I post Great. this? Why do I Great. go get on a plane? Um, and be and being honest with that. Yes. Well, this plane I'm on because I need money for my family. Yes. And then they say that. Or be okay with that. Yeah. This thing I'm trying, I'm trying to go uh meet with these people. I'm golfing with this guy because I need to raise money. Right. Right. I, I think I think it's so hard for people to be honest with themselves, therefore they're never honest with others. Great. And I think if we lie to ourselves, we're gonna inevitably lie to others. And I I, I don't know where that starts maybe it does in presence but i do think that's a big thing for for leaders i i just read a book this last year by john mark homer do you know john mark homer i know the name. You, you know that of name of course he wrote a book called live no lies mm. and i just i love the title yes but the more i got into the subject matter i'm like wow there's a lot of liars mm. we're living a lie we're self uh we're managing our image yes. we're we're trying to cr present ourselves as bigger than we are. Yes. And we all do that. We all want to be impressive. We, uh, yeah, we all want to be impressive. We all want to be liked. We all want to be accepted. But I think to be a leader, you think about what leadership is. You know, John Maxwell says, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm. It's influence. Yep. How do you get influence over somebody you're trying to use? Mm. How, how could I influence you if I'm I'm there to take from you, mm. I'm, you're there to, it, you know, like I always think a great leader walks in the room and says, there you are. But a weak, a weak leader walks in the room and says, here I am. Whoa. Like, look, hey, That's beautiful. Are you, are you so impressed? Whoa. You know? So I love that you're talking about being honest and getting to the place of where your motives are in check mm. and you're clean. Because I think then you are leading from power. Mm. You're leading to to serve somebody. I want to talk to you about work ethic because I think you have an incredible work ethic. The, way, the reason why you are where you are is because you're disciplined, you're diligent, you have a, a physical fitness regimen, you, you, you're in the office, you're not just mailing it in. Talk to me about this this guy right here to to our left, Kobe Bryant, Mamba mentality. Oh and what did you what have you taken from his life oh when he was alive and and post? Tell me about the Kobe oh impact you in your kidding? life. We'll be here all day. Yeah, I feel that way. I That's why I love any you. Any bigger influence? He'd be the one. <laughs> what? Yeah, tell me. About, oh, I want to. I want to know. I, I I get this sense, and I love that about you. Oh him. man, he was a gym rat. Yes, it, it wasn't. It wasn't his obsession with winning mm. exclusively. That's what mm. people don't understand. He loved to win. He wanted to win. But he was obsessed with the game. My difference, I think, and one thing that I gleaned just from him reading about him, I read every book, every, anything Kobe, all things Kobe. I just, wow. I mean, it's all things Kobe for me. Sorry, real fast. Do you remember where you were when you found out, when you heard the news? Absolutely. Where were you? I was in church. You were in church? I was in church. So it was like a notification? No, it's my uh, my security guy, a white guy, leaned over to me. That's very important. Yeah, well, leaned over to me, and he was Caucasian. Yeah, too. he's a Caucasian. <laughs> where's the loss? <laughs> yeah, hit him with "Where's the loss?" real fast. Where's the loss? We had to play it. <laughs> he leaned over. He's like, "Yo, um, it's like Kobe died." So mind you, my gut falls to the ground because my best friend in the world' name is Kobe. Oh my! From the gosh. age of five, college so you think, roommates. You think he's talking about that Kobe? College roommates, best. I mean, best man, godfather of kids, the whole nine. I mean, we've done everything in the world. This is my I, it, your guy. It, this is my guy. We're blood brothers. Like he's my guy, 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 my guy, guy, guy. So I, it's only one Kobe come to mind. So I'm like, find me a bridge to jump off of. It's, a, it's, it's I'm over. done. I'm yeah. done. I can't live. I can't do ministry. No, Kobe's going. Oh, as oh. I said, what did you just say? He said Kobe Bryant. And I was like, it was a, a relief. A little bit of a relief. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. One hundred percent. Horrible. Stop. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm sad. I don't know him. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. devastated. 
I'm there. It jacked me up too. Of I was kind of like in the room, just kind of like can't believe this. Yeah, happened. I couldn't shake it, it. I felt it, but I didn't know him. Yeah. So that was, it was weird. It was a relief, but it was also like, a, oh my god, I can't believe this happened yeah, to Kobe. This is Kobe. Kobe's not supposed to die. There's a few people not supposed to die. He was not supposed to. Michael die. Jackson's not supposed to die. Yeah. No. There's several other brothers that. Yeah. We don't need. <laughs> That's terrible. Several other brothers. <laughs> We start naming him. We can, you, we can be good without him. I mean, he got to be the first. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Our next sponsor is a company called Belay. And if you have any staffing needs, any hiring emergencies, if you're looking for online assistance, Belay is the company for you. Not only do they provide top-notch professional service, but they have a special gift for you, for all of our leaners. Head on over to the description in the link below, and we're going to get you hooked up with everything you need from Belay. All right, let's jump right back into this episode. So you read a bunch of stuff about Kobe. Yeah, like you his love work him. ethic. He would he would get up a game day, a game day. He started four a.m. Man, four a.m. He do a full workout. He go to Staples, do the walk through, talk through. He had a deal with the owner of a hotel right there. Mm -hmm. He go over there. He had a penthouse during the season. Mm -hmm. He go to the room, sit up there, watch film. On the way, about, mind you, after doing his own workout that morning, on his way to Staples, he would ride in a van with ice buckets, watching more film. This is every game, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? So you go, he goes to Staples, do the walkthrough, go to the hotel, go up to the penthouse, take a nap, come back down, go back to Staples, you know, put up more shots, play the game, you know, and then he work out afterwards. Like, it was just a, it was a different... He work out four times a day, man. Four times a day. Dear God. Not once. Four. Wow. He did two workouts before lunch every day. So, I mean, his drive. Yeah. But he just loved, loved, loved the game. That's yeah. what I'm trying to teach, you know, the guys who are around me. Mm. Don't love the stage. Love the shovel. Mm. You want to be a well digger, man. Yes. You fall in love with digging, if you fall in love with just the grind of the word, yeah. I love to wrestle with the word. Yeah, that's as that's more fun to me than delivering it. 100%. I have more fun studying it than yes. I do delivering it. Yes, I'm like, where did this come from? God, yeah. this is insane. So yeah. I love that. It's the same with like I was just talking to our friend Furtick about it. Like I love songwriting more than I love performing. Wow, it's the it's the solving a puzzle. It's the mystery. It's the uncovering, finding treasure that I didn't know was there, finding words I didn't know that could go together. All of those things to me, like the the gym is mm. where the, that's where the fun is. Mm. So unless you're a hooper, yeah. you don't get it. And there's a, a lot yeah. of people, they just want to get on Sports Center. Yep. I don't care about yep. that. Yep. I just want to play ball. Yeah. It's like the the gift, the the work is the greatest gift. It's not the results. And I think that's, you know, results are great. And someone like yourself, you've had probably seasons of result and seasons where there's not been crazy yeah. result. It doesn't change the way you work. Yeah. You know, the work ethic is to me, it, it also to me garners like a great self-respect. Yeah. I know when I lay my head down, I tried as hard as I could. Yes. That's all I can control. Yeah. I can control my attitude and my input. That's all I got. Period. Everything else is sovereign. Everything else is kind of out of my control. Yeah. It's a great, yeah. It's a season. It's a grace. It's a, you know, fill in the blank. But I'm going to work my, what is the saying? Like, I'm going to pray like it depends on God. I'm going to work like, like it me. depends on yeah. me. And that to me is like, that's leadership. Leadership is taking ownership of like, what's in my control. Kobe was that guy. It's like, yeah. you think I'm good now? I think I could even develop it even to another level. Yeah. And you see that quest, that desire. Do you feel that that you're in that place right now? Because you've been good for so long. You've been leading for so long. Are, do Would you say you're like, you're the hungriest to improve and get better and work right now? Maybe. When was another time that you felt like- Well, I think, uh, I, I don't, I don't cut corners, man. Mm. I don't cut corners. I mean, there's guys who grind, right? I don't, man. I, I go after it. I don't cut corners in my message prep. Mm. I want to. I want to go all the way. I want to see everything. I mean, I, I don't give everything I got, even in the messages. I mean, you're the same way. But I, I don't want to 
I'm not just trying to put something cute together. Mm. I want to, God, what else is there there? What else is there in this text? And so I want that. I want to contend with that. Mm. Um, you know, physically, we're going to, you know, we work out, you know, try to eat as, as you know, pretty clean. I'm not pretty clean, but pretty clean. Mm. Um, you know, um, I'll tell you something else that I monitor that's very helpful for me to keep me clean. When I say clean, I'm not saying perfection, right? right. Just saying like, just clear. Yep, clear. It's probably an even better word. Um, something else that helps me is what I, what I, what I take in. I'm mm. very strict about my take in. Mm. So I don't watch stuff. Mm. I don't watch crazy stuff. Yeah. Like, why? No. So this happened. I, I, I used to be a little more lenient. My mother-in-law had this master line that changed my life. Mm. This is 10 years ago. Wow. There was a movie that came out. Mm. Everybody was going to see it. Mm. I had so much steam, so much noise. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. Everybody's talking about it. My wife and I get dressed. We're going to have a date night. So we're going to watch the movie. Mm. My mother-in-law, the thing you got to understand about my mother-in-law, she's not like churchy. She's mm. chill. Mm. Super chill. Super chill. Not judgmental. Mm. Almost too- What a gift. Almost too not judgmental. Yeah. It's like- you should judge him a little bit. Yeah, I think that was a they sin. They kind of messed up. Ma, I yeah, think yeah, that was yeah. a sin. That one is blatant. She's like, I don't know. You know, maybe it's from his spirit. Live spirit, not law. I don't know about that one. That's pretty obvious. So it's super chill. The yeah. be- a beautiful gift. Beautiful heart. Yeah. So th- it came unexpected from her. So we're dressed. We're about to walk out. She's so chill. She's so chill. She's not like eating cereal or something. She's yeah, so chill. Yeah, she's yeah. like the homie. She's yeah. like big sis, right? <laughs> this is my, she, you know, she's probably just sitting there with like a bonnet on, eating cereal, watching like a cowboy show. Yeah, yeah. She's so chill. She's like, where are you guys going? I was like, we're going to the movie. She's like, oh, cool. What you going to watch? We're going to watch this movie. She said, hmm. Do you know what that movie's about? She's like, yeah, I think like they, it's like cheating on his wife or something like that. She's like, yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure from the previews, it's about an affair. Do you guys want to have an affair? We said no. She no. Said, then why would you put that in your spirit? Yeah. Why wow. would you even like let that in? Why would you even bring in the idea? Wow. Needless to say, we didn't watch the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She but won. it's such a, especially from someone unassuming like her, mm. it's such a massive yeah. revelation. Why mm. feed yourself something you don't even want to mm. contemplate, something you don't even want in your system, something mm. you don't even want to like, why take that in? Mm. And I think so many times we we draw this line like, mm. don't be judgmental, which is fine. I'm not saying, mm. you know what I mean? Don't do anything and turn the TV off when the commercials come on. I'm not saying yeah. any of that. But I'm saying you you want to be careful. For me, it's been helpful. Mm. So I'm I'm just clear. I don't have a bunch of- Yeah, of working through it. And... Yeah, there's grace of God. I'm not bragging on being self-righteous. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. But I steward that as well, right? Of course. I just steward it. I don't want to, I can't, me personally, because I am a creative- Things that other people can just brush off, and there's people that can watch, yeah, stuff, crazy, and they don't yeah. do anything to them. To me, it's going to be in my dream for the next three days. That's right, and I think you know, with with great response, the more responsibility you gain, the less rights you have. Whoa! I don't have the right just to go watch whatever I want to watch or talk however I want to talk. Whoa! I have great responsibility. So if I sign up for leadership and responsibility, that means I said no to all my rights. I don't have the right just to Whoa. run my mouth. I don't have the right to. Sleep in and Whoa. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I got response to who much has been given. Much is required. Much is it's required. Great. There's a requirement that's on your life, mm. and and that's a, that's a that's a big deal. I think to me that's not a burden. That's a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take that in stride and go like, all right, I'm happy to lay stuff down. If yeah. there's a wrestle there for entertainment or mm. fill in the blank for you, I always go like, ah, you can't arrive, you know, at the next level mm. yet. You've got to like what you said about those giants. You got to you got to slay. You got to yeah. die to that. You got to put that in the altar to get to that next level. Yeah. I, I, one of the things I respect about you a lot. Talk to me about your value of not gossiping. I've never heard you say a bad mm. word about another person. I've mm. never heard you um, like slander other people's names. Um, in leadership, one of the signs that you're a weak leader, in my opinion, mm. is that when you're happy to see people fail, Whoa. you're happy. Whoa. You know, I saw this video the other day about micro expressions mm. and micro expressions um, reveal how someone really feels about you. Mm. So if I tell you, you know, something bad just happened, uh, you know, I got a car accident or I lost, 
you know, X, Y, and Z or da, 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 da. And your first facial reaction is kind of like, and then you hide, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. But no, the first reaction is your true feeling. Whoa. Whoa. So, you know, I always think that you want to get to a place, number one, where everything is genuine, authentic. Yeah. You know, you're not having to put it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Act like you're better than you are. <laughs> How? What is your commitment to speaking life, your power of your tongue, power of confession? When you think about leading with your words, shaping your world, mm. what comes to mind? I think uh, if I'm honest, I think pastoring has helped me with that. Mm. I don't I don't know if it's as practical or like a, a one two step or something. Yeah. You know, I think pastoring has just given me such a wide view of people. When people around you have affairs that you didn't see coming, it changed your, it just changed the way you see stuff. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? It's like what? Yeah. Wait a minute. I didn't see that coming. And then you start dealing with the psychology of people and you start mm. figuring out Man, mm. people are way more layered and have way more mm. things that, Travis, you don't have a right. right. My, my innocence being guarded as a child, mm. for example, just as split, as explicit as this, me not being molested yeah. has nothing to do with me, man. Mm. I had a mom who was just no tolerance. Yeah. You're not spending the night anywhere. Church yeah, you're, not going, yeah. you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You're not they can come over here. Thank God. You're not, yeah, you're not, no, it's not gonna be I'm like, why? Like everybody else. No. There ain't gonna be no accident, nothing. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So she just was overly that's all my mom. There's nothing to do with me. Who's to say, Travis, what your appetite would be had you been introduced to that? Who's to say, oh. man? Who's this? Are you around here bragging about you've never done drugs? Who to say if, you know what I mean, your, yeah. your dad or your uncle or somebody introduced you that at 13, at 12, at 11, you're, it changes everything. Oh. Your taste bud change depends on what your exposure is. And so I heard someone say one time, one second of violation demands a lifetime of payment. Is that insane? It's the truth. One second, one second. Of, of a violation. It demands for the rest of your life payment. Yeah. It's, it's true. Like, it, and it's sad. It's true. That's why it's I do sad. think we should have a compassion. It's sad, man. So when I sit with some of these people and we start digging into, all right, let's get beyond the fact that you just blew your life up mm. and let's start digging. It's like, fam. So I'm hearing, I hear different stories, you mm. know, of like, man, you know, I was introduced to this. Mm. Or this happened to me, or mm. like, and it's a lot of the similar stories of exposure yeah. and perversion yeah. at an early age that yep. now I'm contending with. Yeah, I'm old and I should be over it, mm. but I'm not, and my wife can't satisfy it, no matter how hard she tries, because mm. I'm jacked up. Mm. So it's like, man, when you start having those conversations over and over, you see that it's more common mm. than the opposite. That's right. Yeah, you, that, you're, that you're the creates, exception. That creates compassion that, yeah. for, me, for me, not judgment. And so all, like my build, my, the way that I grew up guarded, man, I, don't, I ain't got nothing to do with that. So that's mm. one reason I, I'm not, the only thing that, that's tough for me, it was the thing that's tough for Jesus. I do have a hard time for people who fake it mm. and constantly like create a lifestyle. I, I don't. Manipulators, like people use their power to manipulate people. And we know those people who just, I'm just running game in the name of Jesus. I, I'm not gonna, I'm never, you're not gonna catch me like, this person sucks. But you know what I mean? But those but people, yeah. Yeah, that, it's that's difficult. That's a difficult one. Yeah. That's a difficult one. That if you're like a real homie and you ask me, I'd be but, like, uh, but I, but I, but I, but I, wolves think, are different. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I think also part of being a leader to me is protecting. Yeah. Speaking up for people that could be taken advantage yeah. of because, you know, those people will prey on the weak. Yeah. And so we have to defend. At the end of the day, we have to yeah. step up and be a defender of That's going correct. like, you 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 use that person, that person. Well, you're just going to continue until somebody holds you accountable. Yeah, it's great. So we're going to have to step up and have this awkward moment yeah. because you're not going to mess with, you know, yeah. sheep. You're not going to mess with God's people. Yeah. And, and but that it's tough. Yeah. I think, you know, when we talk about leading, a lot of times people want to talk about culture. Culture to me is simply how we act, interact, and respond. Mm -hmm. So I develop, a, I try to develop a culture of safety by how I act, interact, and respond. Mm. So being a leader to me is constantly having to do my best to act right, mm. um, interact in a positive That's manner, right. and respond to crisis, I respond to situations, respond 
to fall out, respond to mm. wolves. Mm -hmm. And that's how you establish culture. That's great. And go, we're going to act this way. This is our value. Yeah. We're going to interact this way. This is our value. Mm. And we're going to respond in the goods and the bads in these ways. That's great. And trying to fill in the blank for that. I love that. You know, so, I, I, but I want to talk about this book. Ooh, I'm excited. Look at this photo. I'm about it. How long ago was this photo taken? Oh, yesterday. Yesterday. This is a strong, I said this to you yesterday, this is a strong photo. Yeah, I don't know. When did we do this? I don't remember when it was. How long ago was the photo taken? November. Yeah, it's. it just feels like it's right. It's just like November. the right. This is book number what? One. For, this is the first one. My first book ever. First of this many. This is called a galley copy. First of It'll many. It'll look better in May when it drops. Yeah. May 14th. It'll be a hard cover. Yeah, okay. okay? Woo! This is a real, this is a real thing. Hard cover. It's hard real. Cover. Yeah, it's a real this and I did an audio book. It's a real book. The audio book. Audio book is the, the hardest thing I ever did in my life. No one understands. It's the hard hardest. <laughs> I got degrees that were easier you did, you than did, that. Yeah, you just audio go book. home and you want to sleep. It was, a, it was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> I can't agree more. It's so hard. I was like, maybe I can't read. So talk to me about about this book. There's what, a word what, in what, there. What, 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 There's a word in there that I didn't know. I didn't know how to pronounce until I came across it. <laughs> Cupboard. Cupboard. I haven't said that I, word since I, middle I, I, school. How do you spell it? In, Wait, in, in a cupboard. Cup, cupboard, like C U P B O A R D. See, I still can't say it. Yeah. Cupboard. So when I read it, I was like, cupboard. Cup I, yeah. I was like, I literally said out loud, Indian in the cupboard. Well, what's so funny for me is like, so I have a ghostwriter. So, you know, me and him work, you know, hand in hand. But then I'll really understand what he wrote once I do the audio book. Right. And then when I started reading something, I'm like, this joker is way smarter than me. <laughs> I would never use this word. I don't word. know what this word like, is. My vocabulary sto stops at flabbergasted. That's as big as it gets. <laughs> That's as big as it gets for me. That is a big one. Flabbergasted. <laughs> You know, facetious. That's as big as it gets. This guy's dropping words. I'm like, oh man, I'm so sorry. I don't know yeah. what it means. Yeah. Could someone in the back yeah. uh, look up what this means? Yeah, I have no clue. What it's in your is. book. Yeah. I, no clue. I wrote it, but didn't. Anyways. This is not me. This part wasn't me. <laughs> so tell, what, give me the genesis. How did you get this message? Oh man. So I am. Uh, I'm in Charlotte. I'm in Charlotte. I'm headed to. And I don't say the names in there, but we're leaning, so I can I can see yeah. it. But I'm headed to to Ferdick's house, right, to work out. This is five six years ago. Wow. I'm headed to his crib, and I'm I'm with his uh his right hand dude I'm with chunks. Who texted me this morning, by the way, in in uh while you were preaching, a photo of him in a Zoe sweatshirt today. A, with with Macy, one of our girls, these guys know yeah. Macy. He, he Ferdick's right hand guy was with one of our girls yeah. that works on leadership lean in. Anyways. No, Charles is one of the greatest the leaders ever. Yeah, he's amazing. So I'm I'm with him. We're riding. We passed uh one of their other locations, right? It's like eight minutes away from the yeah. streaming yeah. location. Yeah. And then his location is Yeah, what are these? Starbucks? Yeah. Like, uh, I'm like, this is immaculate. Yeah. And I'm like, why is it so close? It was, you know, he gives me some business stuff. Then he's just like, um, you know, it's like our first main, you know, one that we built or whatever. And like year, like, like, yeah, two or two. three. Yeah, year two. We, you know, we Big cash. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, you know, we had somebody who gave us a bunch of money and, we, you know, that it helped us get us. Everything he said after that was Charlie Brown. <laughs> it was bop, 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 bop. <laughs> I am, I have been taken out of this Jeep and I am... Jacob wrestling with an angel. Wow. He's wow, wow, wow. I am, I'm full blown argument with God. Wow. Literally. Now, it's all right here. I'm not out of the Jeep, but here in my spirit, <laughs> I'm like, what? What did I just hear him say? You did what for them? I said, what? I know you're not racist. Mm. <laughs> Are you? Are you? <laughs> what? Like, I, God, I didn't ask to be in Colombia. Wow. I didn't ask to start a church. I'm struggling. Yeah. I don't have no money. We yeah. don't know. Like, what? I don't. You told me to do this. Mm. Like, where's mine at? Like, wow. It's not, this ain't cool. And the Lord spoke to me in that truck. This is mm. where the book came from. He said, What would you do with a million dollars? Um. <laughs> And they hire some people. Yeah. Who? Um, you know, more like 
people to do what? Better question, Travis. All of this has happened in a truck. I'm not lying. Wow. Better question, Travis. The few people you got on staff right now, what do they do? Um, Help me. I'm going to ask you again. What would you do with a million dollars? I get a building. Where? What size? Interest rate? Down payment? Um, wow. What would you do with a million dollars? I don't know. Thank you. Wow. Money's easy for me. Mm. I provide. It's mm. easy. It's nothing. Money's mm. not, it's nothing. But as long as you have a prayer without a plan, it's just a wish. So you're praying for the wrong thing. You're praying for miracles. You should be praying for management. Wow. You're praying for stuff. You should be praying for strategy. Wow. You're praying for the wrong thing. Wow. I can't give to something where there's not a plan. Wow. And I know the proof of your expectation is your preparation. Mm. How are you stewarding what you currently have? Can't answer any question I just gave you. So let's just kill here. Don't worry about moving. Mm. Worry about maximizing. That shifted my world, changed my leadership. It was Jeez. that day I became a leader. That I, day. That day. I'll never forget it. Never told, never told Furtick about it. So how are you go, able to go do that workout? You're like, your head is spinning. Well, the whole time, it was the worst workout in the world. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. all I'm doing is drilling with questions. I don't believe in wasting oil. If God give me access, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah, get smarter. Yeah, yeah. I have to. Yeah. I, I just, so I'm asking questions the whole time. We're talking music. We're talking sports. We're talking everything. I mean, it was, first of all, it's, who gets to work out with the king? You know? Yeah, so yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having the time of my life, but yeah. I'm just asking him questions, questions, questions. But no, nah, he don't even, I don't, he don't know the story. Wow. But that, you know, it, it changed my life. Wow. And, and I think it's such a necessary message for leaders because a lot of people are frustrated waiting on God. Yes. And the truth is he's waiting on us. That's like, the bottom line. Yeah, if we have a real plan, write the vision, make it plain. Mm. If, if we have a real plan. And last thought, if we if our desires align with him, one of my favorite scriptures is a song. It says that if you delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your That's heart. It. It does not mean he'll give you what you want. Mm -mm. It means he'll give you what to want. Ooh. So if my heart is aligned with him, then I have actual, I have, uh, I have divine desires. Mm. Not just this random stuff that I saw on social or TikTok. And yeah, I, I want yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Now I want what he wants. Yep. He puts his desires in my heart. And those are the desires that he'll bring to pass. So I'm praying into Things that God gave me wow. to pray for. Wow. Not things that I've been inspired by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so are you praying for There's the wrong thing? There's a big thing? difference. Yeah. You're wow. praying for the wrong thing. So that's what the book is about, man. I think it's going to really help people, you know, to get in alignment um, and help. My, my prayer is that when we do get his desires in us, we can finally hold in our hands what we've been holding in our heart. Mm. And, you know, fast forward, I did get a million dollars from someone. Fast forward, we bought a building cash. Fast forward, we, you know, looking now for another building because wow. we have more people than we have space. So things started happening wow. that I was praying that I thought I wanted, that I thought I needed. But the truth was I wasn't ready for. Wow. So, but I started praying, man, give me, give me a manage, give me a mind of management. Mm. Man, give me a, give me wisdom. Give me teach, a mind of management. Yeah, teach me how wow. to steward. Teach me how, a part of stewardship is also appreciating what's around you. Mm. It's a major part of stewardship. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's not just knowing how to duplicate or knowing how to get interest back, mm -hmm. but do I appreciate do I appreciate what's already on me, what's already around me? And so those things started shifting me as well. I started getting appreciation for some of the people on my staff and like wanted to know their world and what's going on. And I started, you know, John Maxwell, I started adding value. Mm -hmm. And then, man, I mean, I can't even explain what has happened now in South Carolina. It's out of this world. Since then. Since then. That was a turning point. And give me the, the, the sub is learning to ask what God wants for you, not just what you want. Yeah. Yeah. What, I, I, tell me about that just for a moment. Um, learning to ask what God wants for you. So that's, that's what I need is to get his heart for my life, to get his will for my life. And to get his perspective. Mm. His perspective. Mm. I tell a story in there. It's one of my favorite four stories in Second Kings chapter four. The widow woman, right? She she needs she needs help. Son's about to go to slavery. Husband's yeah. dead. He ran with the prophets, so she's a, a retired first lady. He died. There's no life insurance. She has nothing, mm. nothing. So he's about to lose everything in debt over her head. Walks up to the prophet Elisha and says, "Yo, man, you knew my husband. He ran with the prophets and." 
he's out of here. I don't have debt. You know, we're in debt. We're in trouble. Mm. And uh, he did not ask her, her Zelle, her Cash App, or her <laughs> routing number. Yeah. He says, cool. You don't have anything. Heard. What do you have left in your house? Mm. It's nothing. You know, not a, a small jar of olive oil. Have nothing. What do you mean? I have nothing left. I love this. She comes to him and talk about her husband. So she's talking about who left, but she doesn't focus. He shifts her focus from who left to what's left. Mm. So perspective. When I get a proper perspective, I'm able to focus not on just who betrayed me, who walked out, what relationship so didn't work, not who left, but what's left. What do I have yes. left around me Big. that I should still put emphasis on, still mm. put focus. And then when I put that focus on what's left, and it can be small, got to multiply it. Yep. I believe it. You know, with all my heart. Now you see value in it. And the, and the appreciation. You have appreciation. I start to appreciate. Oh, I got something left. I got something. It's so small, good. but I got something. And then he could breathe on that thing and... You know, you, the rest is history. So, yeah, that. but all that is a part. It's so many different nuggets, and I'm talking a lot about relationships. I'm talking a lot about betrayal, so things that leaders deal with. How yeah, do I absolutely. get over these hurdles, you know? Um, absolutely. And, and start praying, you know, for, for God's will. Start praying, you know, his way. It's not a prayer book. Mm. It's not a prayer book. I'm not teaching you how to pray, right? It's a prayer to, to shift your perspective, shift your focus from praying for things that God may not be concerned about. Mm. Praying for expired things, mm. instructions that are over, that have been over, you know, praying for wow. praying for stuff, like I said, instead of strategy. So it's a shift. Mm. It's more of a shift to like, man, let me get in alignment and actually pray the the prayers that matter to him the mm. way that he wants so that I can get the things that he wants. That's really what it is. It's a shift. Stewardship, management, leadership, all things leadership. It's really what the book is about. So are you praying for the wrong thing? Yeah. You got to pick up this book at all the leaners. Uh, we're going to put a link, get the pre-order. It's about to come out in May. Uh, but man, man of God, you're unbelievable. Truly. The fact that you can be as smart and as funny, you are, you are, you remind me so much of John in the best way. I know we both have an affinity. We love John. Yeah. You just remind me of him so much. In the I say that in the highest praise, your gifting is insane. And I can't wait to see where God not just takes this book, but your life. Wow. I can't wait to see. That's so Who kind, knows? Man. There is no limit on your life. Well, I'm thinking about opening up Australia, Forward City, <laughs> Singapore. You know, Singapore. <laughs> uh, we love you so much. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, watching, listening. Again, make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a comment. Let us know where you're listening to this one from. Let us know a thought or two. So many great things dropped in this one. Let us know which one you love, which one really inspired you, impacted you. We'll be back next time. We love you. Yo, we'll see you soon. shout out, shout out my wife. Yes. Shout out my wife, Dr. Jackie. The doctor. Dr. Jackie Green. Check her out. All the leaners, check out Dr. Jackie Green. You got to check her you out. She got a lot of stuff popping. <laughs> Absolutely. We love you. <laughs>